Okay, I'm just gonna have a little check of my audio here while there's nobody around and see if this makes a difference for me. Oh, goodness me. Let's see. It's live now. All right, you guys can see me. How's the audio? Seems to be working. I don't know what I did. No idea. Okay, so for those of you just jumping in here, I did nothing. All I did was reboot. Um, <laughs> uh, for those of you jumping back in, hello, we've taken, no, it's fine. It's the face cam. We took that long to work all this out. Um, so for those of you just jumping right in now, we had a false start. The audio was bad. Now we've got a camera issue. Camera's fine. Um, I actually did nothing to fix the audio. I just rebooted my system. And, you know, we'll see how it goes. So, you know, cheers to face cam. We've got the face cam mug now over on Redbubble. Um, mm. So thank you to all of you who have jumped from the other stream to this stream. I'm sorry for those of you that got lost in the changeover. Um, I've just got to move some things around. Okay, so back on topic. So today I want to talk to you guys about spindling and making your own yarn and how you can make yarn with a stick. I mean, it's a fancy stick, I'm not gonna lie to you, but you can totally do it with just a, like a little dodge stick, okay? Um, Kerry sees a tote, also, that's, there is a tote, yes. Um, it's full of spindles bits, actually, I think I took out most of the spindles, anyway. Um, so, here at Fibrific, um, I love fiber and yarn and all the things, um, that go with it and one of the things that I've really found that is I needed a corner of the craft that wasn't a business um, so that I could sort of sit back when I'm on days off or, or time off or whatever and just do something that is not for sale now because I can't help myself I'm sure I'll Instagram it because I love Instagram and I'm such a tragic so what I do is I spin yarn so I sell spinning wheels and I sell fibre, but I do not sell hand spun yarn, and I do not sell spindles. And I definitely don't sell my spindle spun yarn because it is takes a long time. It is a true slow fashion, slow craft item. Because even when you spin on a wheel, that's slow compared to going to the shop and buying it. Um, but it is quite quick compared to spinning it on a stick. Okay, so now I'm not going to go into the details too much of which countries do what kind of spindling, but I do have a few different types of spindles here. Do you guys want to see um, a couple of different types of spindles from a couple of different places? So, you know, say yes in the chat if you want to um, check out some of these spindles that I have here. Um, I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. I'm a little frazzled now this morning. I was like in the zone and then the mic played up. Mm. And also, again, last time I could see all the viewers and everything like that, this time I can't. So that would be really cool. Yay, I finally got on with a picture and sound and able to chat. Excellent, Kathy. We had a false start. Um, Sharon would like to see a Turkish spindle. Pippin wants to see. It's good morning, Sally. It's okay. We're just restarting. Um, you've only missed like two minutes of actual hearable sound. Um, Spanish Chick says maybe or also because I like to have all of the things. Hey Holly, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the chat. I'll just get a bit comfy. I was a bit frazzled so I was like running around. Oh, running, running, running. Um, is it possible for those of you who are here in the chat, if you're comfortable with this, if you can please go and share the new link onto Facebook um, in, in your craft groups so that, um, so that it can get out because I've got the old link out that I put out this morning. And it's going to be sending people to the wrong place. Um, so, yeah. Can you give a demo on how to start a Turkish spindle? Are you make a leader? 
Yes. Um, I can do it with the standard support. I was just having a look because while I do have Turkish here, they've already started. Um, I didn't bring out any empty. So, um, yes, I can show you how to start it um, and make your leader, but it won't. Um, Spanish Chicks has already posted in the fun zone. Geez, catch up. That's great. It would ah, if you can't post it on the Facebook page. Only I can. That's okay. I'll have to fix that. All right. Okay. <laughs> oh dear. Um, I'm just gonna jump over here. My stream health is good. Everything is good. Um. Okay, all right, we're going. It's working. Oh, totally frazzled. All right, I'm going to drop down into my second camera here and I'm going to um, start talking spindles. So, oh no, oh no, what, Sharon? What? Please don't tell me the audio went bad. I will, I will probably cry. I will probably cry if the audio is bad again, honestly. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to drop into double cameras. I don't know if I bumped the camera in all my crazy, you know, shenanigans. I don't know. I haven't. Okay, well, I mean, that's moved. I had that off out of the shot things. Okay, so there's a couple of different styles of spindles to start with, okay? So the most common that you see a lot of are these whirl spindles, okay? So this one here is actually a, a top whirl spindle. You can tell because the hook is here and the whirl is closest to the hook. Okay. Now, bottom whirl spindle looks very similar, except it looks like this. So, technically speaking, this one can be used as either because we've got a notch here, so we could do a hitch. Hop, a hitch. Um, but traditionally, a bottom whirl spindle would look like this with the hook up there. Okay. So this is um, able technically to be used as both. I've just realized my webcam is playing autofocus games, so bear with me. That was one thing I did not fix back up when I rebooted. Um, so just bear with me while I stop the webcam from playing autofocus games. So don't like autofocus. Bye. Okay. Okay. All right, that should stop doing that now. Technically, I mean, you know. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we can make a hitch in here um, and we can technically use this as a top whirl as well. Um, this one was a gift to me from a friend um, and I love it. I haven't used it much. This one has got a, sort of like a curly tail. Um, I'm not sure if you can, it's probably easiest to see it from this angle. So it's, it doesn't just, it's not just like a straight up cup hook. It's actually a cup hook that's twisted and it holds your yarn in place just as well. Um, it's just a little thing that this particular company like to use. So not everybody has a whirl. So the whirl, why there is a whirl is its weight, okay? So different weights help to make different thicknesses of yarn. Now that's not to say that you just can't do whatever you want, you can certainly try. Um, but if, if it's too heavy, um, you won't be able to make fine yarns. They'll just keep snapping because fine yarns need a lot of good twist and they need to not have too much weight pulling on the fibers before they've had a chance to twist. So there's ways around it, obviously, a lot of practice and you can just do whatever you want with whatever tools you've got. Um, but when you're starting, trying to begin on a, to begin doing lace weight or something fine on anything heavier than 20 to 30 grams, you're not going to have a good time. Um, so this is a world spindle. So it's actually this is actually the top world. So when you're spinning, I get to see the graphic. So it spins, and it's really cute. So um, that is amazing. Hey Sue Ellen, you made it back. That is awesome. Hey Mel, good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to everybody who came back. So this is a top world. Okay. Then we have our more, um, I consider the Turkish spindles kind of like a hybrid spindle um, because they, while they technically are a drop spindle, this is a form of drop spindle. Um, while Turkish spindles are technically a form of drop spindle, they can also be used as a supported spindle. So whichever way you like to go. So you can either spindle it, um, 
hang on a second I'll see if it probably won't work now because you know you guys are watching so you can just spin it in the air just like that just like a normal supported as a normal drop spindle or if you're more comfortable you can spin it in a bowl okay and that's because it does have a tip most drop spindles don't have a tip because if it drops on the ground the tip will get dinged up so that most and I'm not saying all because it's going to depend on the maker um, most don't have a tip like that they're designed to bounce basically these guys are designed for both okay um, Nat made it hey and Marion's made it back awesome everyone's making it back so my personal favorite for spindling is the supported spindling okay now I'm a big girl I got big heavy arms holding them up in the air for extended amounts of time while I'm crafting is not generally my idea of a good time in saying that I am support I am drop spindling or Turkish spindling this guy in the air it is um, you'll notice that while that's not plied this is plied and that's because I'm doing a method called ply on the fly which we'll talk about another day but basically you spin a bit you ply a bit then you wind it on okay so ply on the fly is a workshop that I taught in New Zealand so some of you have um, some of you may have already had seen it um, I've gone through it with Chintamani she's been going great guns at it I did not invent it by the way did not invent ply on the fly I don't invent anything I just learn it um, but ply on the fly is a really awesome technique to do much easier to do on a Turkish spindle or a drop spindle doesn't work as easily on a support spindle but it can be done um, hey Tony welcome back to the chat okay so then we move on to um, let's have, uh, so we've got this Turkish spindle here this is one of the gliders that's from um, I invented 11 billion oh thanks Kim um, I try you know <laughs> So this is one of the gliders, so it's got longer legs um, or arms. I call them legs. I don't know why, but um, so these have got a longer leg. It's a bit more tapered. You can fill it up a bit more, um, and it just glides a bit better. And I think this is sort of a medium-ish weight. I mean, it's written on here somewhere. Hang on. This is a 27 gram. Scott Snyder writes all his weights on his spindles. This is a Scott not Snyder glider. Scott Snyder glider I, I wonder if he planned that anyway um, this is sort of a medium ish size of the glider um, did I bring out the big one let me have a look nope because I didn't bring out everything guys like I should be clear I have a problem and it's spindle <laughs> but then you've got like so this is the that's the the, the medium glider then you have this little tiny equal sort of just straight up ones now I don't know if I can move anything out to read the weight on this one no so this is another equal one and the advantage of these little tiny ones is they don't just look cute and fun okay they create a very fine yarn all right and they're very very portable I mean trying to find somewhere to pop this versus this one it's definitely the baby for sure now you can fit more on here it comes down to how much you want to spin but the advantage with Turkish spindling is I don't have a turtle out here so what you do for a Turkish spindle I'm not going to do it because I am in the middle of spinning these is you push the shaft out right so this guy will come out right I'm going to pull him out but then you pull out one leg and you pull out the other and you've got a center pull ball I'm going to quickly put that back in before anything bad happens um, and so then you've got your center pull balls. So then you can just ply off your center pull balls, no problems, and keep going. Um, Sharon says, I was told not to spin silk on a Turkish spindle because it's too difficult to get the turtle off the spindle. Is that true? No, it is not true. Um, look, there's a lot of people who have opinions about, you know, what you should and shouldn't do. I am more of the school of give it a try it might work for you um, I don't normally follow these rules this is a uh, what have I got in here a bison um, I've got a bag of beads holding this camera down and they keep just making noise like they're falling 
There we go. Whoops. Um, so I would totally give it a try. Now, what will happen is it'll either work or it won't work. So I would definitely try it with something that you're not in love with first if you're truly worried. I personally wouldn't be worried. Um, I've seen plenty of people spin silk and silk blends on Turkish spindles with not an issue. Um, and it's like the same people who say that you can only spin cotton on Tarkleys. It's, it's, it's not true. It's traditionally you spin cotton on a Tarkley and that's because you have a, a short staple fibre that needs a lot of twist and the Tarkley is a very heavy support spindle that gets a really good amount of twist into it. You don't want something that you don't want a lot of twist and that's what it boils down to and that's what we're going to get into next is your different weights help with the end yarn that you want to create. Um, and I'm going to be speaking in general terms because there are always, always exceptions, okay? Um, Lego Bob has made it to the chat. Um, Spanner Chick has opinions. Yes, she does. Jackie Doyle's work meeting is over. Um, what does Chintamani use for her silk spinning? A Turkish spindle. Absolutely, she does. Um, Sally is reminding everybody to hit that thumbs up. So this is the thing. They're like, it's like when you're first learning to knit and crochet and there's some people that are like, oh no, you must hold your hook this way. And other people are like, oh no, you know, you can't knit that pattern. Now you're a beginner. You must do this other thing. I don't hold water to any of those things because I personally believe if it's something you truly, truly want, you'll make it happen. You will learn the skills, you will hit YouTube, you will find tutorials and while it may not be perfect, it'll be the thing you wanted, not just some random sampler that you're never going to touch again. Like the days of learning by sampler are over, okay? Uh, unless you're making a blanket with little squares and you're having fun with the squares and you need to be having fun, otherwise what is the point? Then the sampler is dead. So, and by the sampler is dead, I'm talking the scarf that has, you know, six inches of this and six inches of this and six inches of this. I personally think beginners shouldn't start on scarves because scarves are boring. Okay. So <laughs> I think a beginner should start on something they like. If they really want a scarf, sure, do a scarf. You're going to get bored. Um, but anyway, it's the same thing with spinning and spindling. You have people who've been doing it a long time who feel that their way is the only way. And I'm not one of those people. Um, Spanner Chick says motivation is much higher to persist if you really want the end product. Absolutely. I 100% agree. I had a friend many, many years ago who wanted to crochet um, Solomon's Knots scarf, right? Do you guys know what Solomon's Knots are? They're the big loopy knots. Anyway, it's, it's a technique and it's not, it's not generally considered a beginner's technique, but she wanted this scarf. So much so that she made it, okay? That she sat down and she made it as a beginner because that's what she wanted. And I think, could be wrong, but she's pretty damn proud of that scarf, you know, like years and years and years later, she's pretty damn proud of it. Lover's Lace, that's the other name for it. Solomon's Knots, Lover's Lace. It's got a few different names. Um, so I feel the same way about that as I do about this. If you want to learn, don't go for that beginner spindle, okay? There is a company who shall remain nameless who have a beginner drop spindle and that thing weighs half a ton, okay? You are not going to get out of much, of a, much less than a bulky weight if you're a true beginner and it will drive you mental, okay? And it is heavy and you drop it and you drop it and you drop it and it's ugly. So go and buy yourself a spindle that you like and stand on carpet, okay? I'm not gonna be uh, confirming or denying what letter that company starts with, but I disagree 100% with their beginner drop spindles. Okay, now, as I take a little break and have a sip of my coffee, in Australia, it's Cancer Council's, Australia's biggest morning tea today. So if you want to donate, Jackie Doyle has popped in a, a link, pop in two bucks. Um, this wasn't, it wasn't in the plan for today, but it's today. So let's do it. If you want to pop in your $2 donation or whatever donation you want to put in, you totally can. It supports Australia's Cancer Council, which do a lot of cancer research. 
um, into a lot of sun safety products for children. It's fantastic. Um, all right, back to the spindles, back to the spindles. Sharon started on a Snyder spindle, love them, me too. I started on that horrible spindle um, that I don't recommend and um, it nearly put me off. Honestly, it nearly put me off something that I was going to love. And this is the thing, again, with everything. If you buy dodgy tools, you may not hate what you're doing, you may hate having to deal with that item. So if you buy bad knitting needles, if you buy cheap berry knitting needles, you may think you hate knitting. And then if you use other knitting needles, you might like be like, oh my God, this is like butter, it's working. <gasps> um, it comes down to your tools, okay? Um, where is, I must be weird because I like my beginner drop and turkey spindles. I've managed sock weight. Sue Ellen, it depends on where you got your beginner spindles from. Okay, so, um, and if, you, if you're getting it from an individual maker, it's a bit different. If you're buying it from a company, it's different again. Um, that was my work meeting and with the news I got this week, it's all a bit timely. Okay. Um, so, Ellen, it doesn't, like, and that's the thing, you managed to get the yarn you wanted. I'm assuming you wanted a sock weight. It doesn't actually matter that much. Um, but don't let it put you off, okay? This is more my point, is don't let, if you are hating a spindle that you have gotten your hands on, try something else. Um, if you are hating a, because I hate, I, well, not hate, I really don't enjoy spinning, spinning on top whirls and bottom whirl drop spindles, okay? They're not my favourite. I can still do it. I learnt on these. I have a soft spot in my heart for it. But as you can see, all my other spindles have got fluff on them. This one doesn't. It tends to be the last one I go to. But I keep it because it's special to me and it was a gift and I love it. Okay. Um, but I definitely prefer personally the Turkish spindles and support spindles. Now before we move on to support spindles, there's other kinds of spindles. So something I want to show you here. This one here is a Mayan spindle, okay? Now this particular one I got from Lair of the Bearded Dragon. He's done a little bit of wood edging in it. It's great, but the reality is it's a simple paddle with a smooth little shafty bit. You poke that through there and you actually have to sort of pinch a bit of fiber into here. It's a bit tricky to get started, but once you get on with it, it's so fun. And you literally, I'm just double checking some stuff because I'm gonna, I'm gonna twirl it, I'm gonna twirl it. You literally twirl one way for spinning and the other way for plying. And you go through and you draft, you draft your fibre and you keep drafting, then you stop and you wrap it around and then you pinch it off and you draft some more and you spin some more until your arm can't do it. I'm going to roll back, arm can't do any more. And then you stop and you wind it on. And it's so much fun. I, um, Ixchel Bunny taught a workshop at a camp I was at. I bought one. I couldn't not. Too much fun. Um, it is, it's, oh, I should probably, I'll do a video um, in how to get started. I'm not a professional at these, um, but it might be enough just to, you know, get you going um, and, you know, just add it to the, or it may even be a what not to do video. Um, so these, these are fun and I like them, but I don't, um, it's again not my favorite empty okay so the ones that aren't empty are things like my Turkish spindles and my Russian spindles um, there's another Turkish that's got some fluff on it because um, this is one project together um, I didn't bring out any others but I've got to oh, I should have brought out a fang I don't have a fang um, but before we move on too far, I wanted to talk more about Turkish spindles and about the differences. So Margecraft, I'll just move this to the side here. Margecraft make a Turkish spindle that you get. I've actually got two shoved into the same bag here. So I've got like the old style that they used to do and now they do a new style. So it's got a different length shaft. I personally prefer a shorter shaft when it comes to spindling. So I still use the old one but it still fits all the bits, if that makes sense. Um, so I want to see you spin with it. No, 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 no. I've never, as, and you've never seen one of those mine spindles. Have a check of them out. They're so simple. It's a very, it's just a thin 
sort of piece of it's very straight very flat with a very centered hole in the middle otherwise it's not going to spin properly um and yeah you just sort of like be like la 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 have fun with that um and how many times you twist it that's the twist you get into your yarn so it's a lot more manual um these turkish spin sorry i'm just dropping this these turkish spindles from marja craft that's not a turkish spindle that's a dista um they don't, their legs don't intertwine like a true Turkish spindle. Their legs sit over the top of each other. Um, now, that may or may not annoy you, okay, because you've got quite a chunk to wrap around. For me, it made no difference, really. Um, it was a bit of adjusting to, it was something a bit different, but it's actually really well weighted. Um, and once you get a couple of wraps on it stops sort of like because you can feel it kind of jiggling and that's off-putting um, but once you get a couple of wraps tied on that stops and it just feels like you're spinning with a normal spindle but the weights are fantastic and you can get it in different like you get a pack with a set of 15 gram arms a set of 20 gram arms hang on a second because I've got doubles of a few things you said 20 gram arms there we go and then your set of 30 gram arms. So you get all this in your pack. So you get a couple of spindles in one go, really. Um, so that, you know, different weights. So if you wanted to spin more like an eight ply, you go towards your 30 grams. If you want to spin a fine lace weight, you head more towards your 15. Um, at the Marja Craft Camp, where I taught the spinning, we had these. So it was about the 20 gram of weights here, plus a longer shaft and a bit easier. And we wanted to teach how to do a clove hitch, so they put that in there as well. Um, does I see bigger toys to spin with? Possibly, possibly. Learning drafting on a spindle, I think, is good. Um, I look. I learned backwards with all my spinning. I learned how to spin on a wheel first, and then went back to spindle spinning. A lot of people spindle spin first, and then go to a wheel. For me personally, I found the wheel was easier to learn to draft on because I didn't have to, it, it didn't have to hold the weight of my very poorly drafted fibers and I didn't keep dropping it because that would have annoyed me and put me off. Um, but it it's, depends. Like anything, do you want to learn how to do spinning on a wheel or do you want to learn how to spindle spin? You'll learn the skills that you need either way. So you don't have to... Um, you don't have to sort of do both. There's no rules that say you have to do both. Um, speaking of spinning project, how is that jumper you are spinning the yarn for the... Uh, uh, what? <coughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, learning to spin backwards means turning left first and right to fly. Um, again, I'm not in the you must spin and you must... Um, Z ply camp. I'm not. I continental knit and I crochet most of my yarn. So I actually prefer to go the other way. I prefer to Z spin and S ply. It works better for me. And when I'm weaving, I like to have one of each so that you get a much nicer reflection of light off your project. Um, I, I don't. I don't really hold to any of the you must do this this way kind of camps. Now I do definitely hold to if you start spinning S, you must continue spinning S, and then you will need to ply that Z. Like it just does not work. But if you start spinning Z, continue spinning Z, and then ply it S. If you don't know what I'm talking about, do I have a piece? Of, I, I I would have to go into a detail with another video. But basically, you spin in one direction. And the lines that it makes on your yarn, I'll have to get some photos up on Instagram. The line that it makes on your yarn is more angled like an S. So you've got like the S edges. And whereas the other, if you spin it the other way, it's more like a Z. So it's going the, I can't twist my head. Z is the other direction. So you've got S and Z. So they go the opposite ways. Um, so yeah, it is, it's different camps for different things. And I personally think you spin different yarn for different projects. Definitely. I need to label my yarns better because sometimes I forget and I have to look at it and like, you know, like, is that a Z or an S plied? I don't know, because I might want to use something for something else. Can you celebrate, elaborate on the weaving with the spun versus Z spun yarn? 
I watched an amazing video uh, by Mark or McKenzie, Judith McKenzie, it was. It was a fantastic video that she did on interweave crochet. So uh, interweave, it was, it was like it was one of the interweave videos, not interweave crochet, but it was one of the interweave videos. Um, and she went into and drew some fantastic pictures, which I visualize every time. And she goes into a major discussion about which yarns for which projects. And she explained that if you warp with a yarn spun in one direction and then you weft with a yarn spun in the other direction, you've got more reflective area. So your project just seems to look that little bit more fuller, brighter. Um, and I thought, what a load of hogs wallop. <laughs> Tried it and just went, okay, that does a thing. It's subtle but it definitely does a thing. So have a go of it yourself. Um, I've got the face cam, guys. I can, I've fixed it. So face cam, sip of the coffee cup. So, yeah, so we've got this um, things that work that don't work. So, yeah. Um, sound is so much better, but it's also a new link. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, Sharon has to go. No problem, Sharon. You can jump back in and watch the replay. Um, someone started to weave with me and left me warped. Oh, I totally didn't need to read that, did I? Um, tried to search for a link, so many to choose from. What's this for? Is that for today's live stream? There should only be two, um, but I could be very confused. Um, anyway, so we're going to continue on. Please do a weaving live stream. Weaving is something that I'm very beginner at. I enjoy weaving. Um, I have a lot of fun with it, but I just, I don't know if I am the person for a weaving video. I mean, I could do a beginner like chat or even for a yarn. I could probably set up a little, the problem is I don't have a little loom. I have big looms. I've got two 80 centimeter looms, so they're big. Um, I'd have to set up on a different table. All right, so, but yes, that, I mean, I could do it. I suppose I could do it. All right, so I'm going to pop this, this Turkish aside with the other Turkishes. Move aside Turkishes. So we have talked drop spindles, we have talked Mayan spindles, and we have talked Turkish spindles. Um, so I'm going to move on to our support spindles, okay? So there are all different kinds of support spindles. All different kinds of support spindle bowls. I pr obviously prefer this type. There are heap of bowls. You do what you want to do. My only, only real rule that I have with spindling is if you have a spindle that has a little metal nib on the end, don't do it in a wooden bowl. Go and find a glass bowl because that little metal nib will damage your bowl and create scratches and grooves. And if you're okay with that, that's fine, but I'm not okay with that. Um, so I always use a ceramic bowl, like um, a little a little rice bowl. Uh, a, another really good one is the little chopstick holder bowls. They're great, um, but I'm a bit of a tragic. I tend to buy the, the bowls that the spindle makers make because I like to support the spindle makers. They do a really good job. The bowls are their easy job. The spindles are really hard. <laughs> so... I try to, you know, support them. So what we've got here is a selection of, that's a Turkish, that's a Turkish. This is a Russian. This is a very skinny Russian. And this here is a specialty spindle. It's got a blown glass um, little weight on it. So the weight is in the glass and it spins beautifully. I got it from Bristol Cone many years ago. Um, and I use it, really, I, I, there's no reason that I don't use it. It's because I think of it as a magic wand and I want to play with it more than I spindle with it, which is just terrible because I should be using it. But I tend not to use it so much, um, but it is beautiful. And Bristlecone did some amazing things. And there's more spindle makers who make these glass um, ends and they put like flowers and things in them. They're beautiful. You can find it pretty well a spindle. Um, that suits your aesthetic somewhere, okay? 
So then you've got um, Spanish peacock spindles. Um, they do a lot of these wood layering things. I actually believe this is a Spanish peacock as well. Um, so um, same company, but they do a few different ones. This is one of their little tiny, I think it's a mini, a mini Russian. I'm, I'm not 100% certain. Um, it's very light. It spins very, hang on, I'll do it with the other hand. It spins very nice when you do it correctly. Um, I tend to spin with my other hand usually, but the camera is not as good. There we go. Um, I'll use a different bowl. It's so light. There we go. But I covered you. There you go. Um, it's a pocket Russian. Thank you, Game of Widows. But, yes, it's lovely and it's short. See, I like the short shaft. As I said, big lady, don't want to be lifting my arms up too much. Um, here is good. Here is comfortable. Um, and so I tend to go more this sort of height. In saying that, I definitely have some that are longer. Um, I did have one more spindle that I brought out, but I cannot see it. Oh, there it is. See, this is another one that's a bit short that I like. It's probably a tad too short. And it's just got like a big wooden bead on the end of a, of a it looks like a double pointed needle, honestly, that's been tapered more in the scent. But again, oops, sorry. It spins beautifully. It's got some decent weight. It can get a nice fine spin on it. So, yes. Now, you have to trial a few. See which one you like, which one you can feel more comfortable spindling longer. There is a, um, there is some talk, like I learnt my support spindle spinning on a Turkish. The advantage of learning on a Turkish is there's already a little bit of weight in the bottom. These guys, the Russians, like this one's got a big, like it's got a fairly big um, point on it. So it's got a bit more weight to it as well, but there's a lot of Russians that are like this one where they've only got a small point, the weight comes as you add more yarn, okay? So, but I learnt on a Turkish, the trick with the Turkish is they start heavy and get heavier, whereas the Russians start light and then get to the weight you want. Um, Sally says, and you try before you buy. I don't generally, but then I find I've got spindle companies that I've been using for years that I'm really happy with. Um, can you try before you buy? If you go to like a show um, or something like that, you can normally like be able to just sit there, like you'll get it empty and you'll be able to just sort of give it a twirl in a bowl. If you can do that, I highly recommend it because if it's not centered and wobbles all over the place, like that one's wobbling because of how I spun it. But if you can get a good, oh, other hand, get a good spin on it, it's lovely. Okay, but if they wobble or they just don't spin properly, you don't want it. So not all spindles are created equally. They need to be centred. Their weight needs to be centred and that is the same for support spindles as it is for Turkish spindles and also drop and top whirl and bottom whirl and all the spindles. Even on spinning wheels, the bobbins need to be centred every because without it, you have drag and pull and you get uneven yarn. Um... You need to get to know the seller, I'm sure, to try before you buy. I like that concept. Yeah, if you know the seller, like for me, I'm 100% certain of anything I buy from Snyder Spindles, Iksha, uh, from um, Lair of the Bearded Dragon and um, these guys over at Spanish Peacock. They've got too big a reputation to lose if it's bad. Um, uh, I've got some spindles that have been hand-made by makers in the US, in Australia, all over the shop. Um, if you get a spindle maker where you've kind of got to wait longer because uh, there's a waiting list, that's generally a good sign. Not always, but generally. Um, where are we? How do you get everything centred? You're the only thing that can breathe. I don't understand. Um, when the borders reopen, we should catch up and you can try mine out. Yeah, you should to we should totally have like little gatherings around the place. Um, Game of Widows is down in Melbourne and like we can totally do that for sure. Um, so um, Sharon wanted to see something which hopefully she'll come back for the for the replay 
Um, she just wanted to see how you start it off. So I've just got a little bit of fluff. I'm just going to start it on my bristle cone. It's a bit tall for me, but it's close to the camera. So again, there's so many ways to do it. Just work out what works for you. And this is how I do it. I'm like, you guys know me, irreverent, do things how I want. I tend to like stab some fluff and slowly draft it. And then I pinch and twist and I hold it on and I get the twist in the direction I want, draft it out. I probably needed to pre-draft that a bit more. And I keep pinching and twisting and see how it's holding on there, but it is adding twist into the yarn. And it's a bit of a slow process. And then you keep doing that until you think it'll stay on. And then you give it a little test run and that's going to stay on. And then you keep pinching and twisting until you get enough that you're comfortable will be a leader. So for it to be a leader, it needs to tie at the bottom and come back up again. So this is a long shaft, so it needs a long leader. So in the meantime, I'm just pushing it down and just rolling it onto there just to get it out of the way because I don't want any yarn in my little finger spot. She says, as there's tons of yarn in her finger spot. Move down. Okay. And you just keep going and you go slowly for your leader. You want good twist in there. And a bit more. I'll do a bit more. Because this is quite a long spindle. So it depends on the length of your spindle as to how much you need. But you want some good twist in there. You don't want it to come undone. Um, Freaky uses string. That's totally legit. There's a lot of people who use string. They'll actually use a piece of string that's got two slip knots, one on each end. They'll slip it over one end and onto the other end, they slip it over as well. So, yep, totally legit way to make it. So if you want like just a couple of little leaders pre-made, I'm not a pre-maker leader kind of girl. So I think that'll be enough. So I just butterfly that off. So it gets stuck where I stabbed it basically. And I pull that off. Now that's going to be a bit I probably pull off later, but in the meantime, it's going to hold my yarn in for me. So that get that in, a couple of wraps around, depending on how much leader you've got. And then I probably could have wrapped it around a bit more. And then you're off to spinning, you've got a leader, and now you're onto your spinning of whatever thickness you want for your yarn. I'm having to sit up very tall to get to the top of this spindle. Very tall indeed. Okay, so that's how I make a leader. I might even make another little video and put that up separately. But that's just a little leader. Um, and as Freaky Geek said, you can totally just use a piece of yarn. But I personally prefer to make my leaders for my spindles out of the yarn I'm going to spin with. Um, if you've got any questions, make sure you pop them here into the chat. If you're watching the replay and you've got any questions, we can try and answer them again. Um, I'll try and answer them in the in the um, chat. If I can't, you know, articulate it, I'll try and make a video for you. Um, where are we? I'm just having a look here. Snyder's turkey spindle is what you are looking for. I love a Snyder. The Snyder spindles are my go-to for Turkish in a heartbeat. I've got I don't know, like five of his, two little minis, two gliders, one's a bigger glider, and one of his cutouts with little T-Rexes because he does this thing where he cuts out, like it's a wider arm, and he cut out with it with a, I want to say bandsaw, but it's probably not a bandsaw, but little, and they're intricate, so intricate little shapes all the way through. It's amazing. Anyway, like blathering, hello. Um, how does it end up at the bottom of the spindle? Okay, excellent question. All right, so see how I just spun that little bit there and I've wound it into what's called a cop. I don't know why it's called a cop. If someone knows the answer to that, I'd love to know. But it winds into what's called a little cop, which is like a little spot. It's like a parking area before you get to move into. It's like it's like you've got to wait at the bar before you're seated at your table, okay? Um, so what you'd have to do is you spin, you, you spin a bit of yarn, right? 
Now, different people, again, do different things. Some people spin this and will wind it straight on. Personally, especially with a longer shaft on this spindle, I like to have enough to make sure I can wind it on without too much drama. So you spin a bit, right? And then you need to get the yarn out of the cop. So I butterfly it out of the cop, go down here, and then I hold it and twisting it in the same direction that I am for spinning, I wind it on to the spindle. Now, I probably uh, this one I can wind on for a bit longer before I have to start coming up. So I'll just keep winding for a second. And you get into a, a, a phase where you can just sort of nearly spin that as fast as you spin your spinning. Now it's just practice. It's all practice. I see a lot of people who get frustrated because they have to spin a bit, stop, draft, spin a bit, stop, draft. It doesn't matter. You get what you need at the end and you, and eventually you'll be able to do more of a long draw, which is where you get some twist in and you can drag your hand out and you can see that the fluff is being collected by the twist. So I'll do that bit under the camera. I'll just wind this bit on. Hang on. Wind that onto the cop in the middle. Get it out of the way and then come back up. And then here you can see where the fibre becomes yarn. It starts twisting in. I'm just getting some more twist. I like to have my hand up on a different angle for that. And again, that's a personal, um, there you go. And you get to the point where you sort of know where it needs more twist. It stops collecting it or it starts making it a bit too thick. And so you can stop, twist it. And then I always give it a bit more twist and then wind it onto the cop. Now Freaky's saying, uh, Freaky and Stacey are both saying they don't make cop. So what they do is I will, Get rid of my cop here so they and i'll wind that on so what people who don't make a cop do see i like to make a cop because i like to make my yarn sit all pretty i'm very tragic it's because they say on their spindles for so long these are guys that actually use their spindle yarn so they will now i can't spin i've got too much in there so i'm untwisting it to undo that twist so that i can pull some of the yarn out get that on there they make a nice long piece sorry about the noise of the spindle in the bowl it's the glass and the wood you make a nice long bit all right and then they literally oh, like you can't see hang on but I've got it all the way out and then they just wind it straight on and then keep spindling. Um, it was just the way I was taught and I personally prefer to do it. So I I like to, yeah, it's your OCD at work fiber effect, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and that's the thing, it's like, it comes down to what you like. Um, I definitely like a cop on a Turkish spindle because I like to do the, um, the wind, the up and down winds um, neatly to make a pretty pattern. Um, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with going straight into winding it on and you just wind it up and down a little bit just so that it grabs nicely. Is it cop or cob? I call it a cob sometimes, but I know it's a cob. So it's probably me being confusing by saying both. Okay. But it is a cob. Um, so after doing this, you have to ply. Yes, you do. Um, look, you know, on a spinning wheel, and I suppose even on a spindle, you could, um, you could do it as a single, but I just find that because you have to pull and draft things so much, I just don't find that I can do it with, when I make a single, I put less twist in it. I mean, that's not the same. Um, so for everybody, but I personally prefer to put less twist in a single yarn um, and then I thwack the crap out of it when it's in the bathtub so that it falls together a little bit. Um, but that's how I make a single, okay? Um, it's not to say that everyone does it the same. I'm just practicing winding straight to the bottom because it's not my jam. Um, 
I don't know why I'm still going. Honestly, this was a little sample bit. This is the yarn, this is the yarn for the other spindle. <laughs> this is the fluff for the other spindle. So I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm just stuck in a groove. I'm just like, woohoo. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. That it, it's very easy to um, to get confused there. Um, yeah. Whoops. No. Cobs and spindle shafts. Maybe I should say spindle shafts. <laughs> um, there we go. But yes, to ply it, you need to have two amounts minimum. You can have more for sure um, and ply that way. And that's why I like to ply on the fly um, because then I don't have to. So that was what we just did there. Um, I don't think I've got anything handy to show you gauge with nothing that's a standard size <laughs> um, I've got a push pin I can show you with the standard push pin so look there you go that's your push pin metal and that's the width of my spinning there so we've gone pretty fine so I personally find now this is just for me and it may not be the case for everybody I personally find that I spin finer on a um, I spin finer on a support spindle and on a drop spindle uh, sorry on a support spindle and on Turkish spindle than I do on a drop spindle. Now I am a hundred percent certain it's because I don't practice on these and I've seen people make stunning lace on the correct weighted one of these. Okay? Um, so I really think that don't rule these out just because they're not my jam doesn't mean they're not your jam. Does that make sense? And if you want me to do a video doing drop spindling, I will do a video doing drop spindling. Um, the trick with drop spindling versus support spindling is camera angles. Okay. <laughs> because it's a much wider shot. I like to hide me in a corner. Okay. Um, <laughs> So um, th this is like, that'd be like a half body shot. Um, yeah. Whereas support spin links in a bowl. It's comfortable. I can sit on the couch very unladylike with my legs crossed, put my bowl in the little gap and, um, and spindle while I'm watching TV. Whereas when I'm drop spindling, I, I honestly feel like I have to stand up. I really do. I feel like I have to stand up now. I, I, try, I try Turkish spindling sitting down. And I can, but it's like you're like going, oh, because oh, you need a bit of length and you're like, oh, it's, it's not exactly comfortable. Um, Stacy says she loves a drop spindle. It's quicker for her. And I think it boils down to you find something you like and you get better at it. Um, I, I, like you guys know, my reason for not doing most things is a lazy. I kept dropping this, which meant I had to get up and bend down and pick it up off the ground and rejoin it. Annoying. When I, when I screw this up, because I still screw these up, it's like, oh, damn, I will have to rejoin. And it's not as big a thing. So that's why, that's why I do it. You like the look of the Russians, Pip and Poppycock? I am a fan of Russians. Um, have you spindle spun before is the question I ask for you. Um, you'd have to get all dressed up and do it on live. Don't know about that. I'd be too far away. I couldn't read any questions. Kim would be all like, I'll come and read them. Mm. <laughs> Never spindle spun before. Okay. Then get yourself a nice little Russian or a nice little Turkish from somewhere and a bowl. You need a bowl and it needs to be smooth. So like really nicely finished. Some of them have a little, I want to call it a dimple. That, that's a dimple right a little dimple in the middle and these really help you especially when you're a beginner um, because otherwise you, your spindle moves around the whole bowl whereas here it sits here and it's less chance of it moving around so if you're a, a super beginner and you want to make your life a little bit easier try and get a little dimple bowl you don't need one but it will help okay um, um, Kim I agree with you I also like the beverage um, 
Stacy says, I sit and drop spindle. I do have longer arms. Yeah, like that's the thing. I've got my little T-Rex arms. <laughs> like, like for me, we worked out during a Zoom chat from my fingertip all the way, all the way here, all the way to here is a meter. Okay. I got a short body arm thing going on. Okay. Um, so for me, drop spindling, like I can do it sitting, but I have to, I'm constantly winding, like spin a teeny bit, wind a teeny bit because otherwise it touches the ground. Um, Freaky says that, that he has to use his drop spindle standing. Yeah, I see. I get it, Freaky. I do. I really get it. Um, Leanne's craft room says, we're buying our son uh, one. He has shown lots of interest since Chantelle showed him her support spindling and I've offered to use all his makes. Oh, there you go. Um, I, I think finding your meter mark on your own body is a really helpful thing. Also check it every now and again. It will change. Um, so, yeah, finding your own meter mark is a helpful skill. So I just grabbed a tape measure with my finger, held the zero there and sort of pushed it out and then pulled it across so that it was against my body. So it's not perfectly a meter, but it's pretty dang close. Like I wouldn't sell something that was one meter based off this measurement. But if I needed approximately a meter of something for whatever reason, I would be happy with it. Um, kick spindles. Lol, I'm down a rabbit hole. Kick spindles are a whole nother thing. Now they um they tend to be much slower, so you do make thicker yarns with them. Spinning comes down to twist and what's going to hold your fiber. Okay, so I'm going to pull off a bit of fiber here. Make some room. So this is um is it a staple or is it two? It's probably two. Yeah. All right. So this is some fluff. Okay. Yarn, all these things are basic, and spinning wheels are basically fancy twisty machines. It's what they do. All they're doing is adding twist to your fluff, okay? Now, to make fat yarn, like, okay, for a prime example, if you've got two ends of your fluff with no twist, they pull apart, okay? Um, if you add twist, oh, that, that's cheating because we know that shouldn't pull apart. You add twist, right? Even just a bit of twist, pulling it apart is a lot harder. Okay. Now, when you want to get that same level of strength in something fine, I'm just trying to make it fair by not having only a single staple. When you have something finer, right, you need more twist for it to have the strength. Okay. So when you've got it. Only like say you needed, um, there's probably someone who's done all the science on this. You only need like five twists to get that strong, right? To get something half that, right? One, two, three, four, five. It'll still come apart, okay? So you need more twists. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Looks good. Not coming apart. So kick spindles spin slower. So you could spin lace, but you'll need to kick it a lot of times because they don't have the same sort of centrifugal spin like this. They more spin like that. Okay, that oh sorry. They these have a really fast center of gravity, they spin really quickly. Whereas the big kick spindles, they're more slow and so it can be done with perseverance obviously but kick spindles tend to um, make thicker yarns faster than thinner yarns does that make sense um uh where are we that was oh yeah one leanne saying that we that was cool that night we all worked out our meter marks it was something we did on one of the, the fiber fix zoomy chats um Navajo spindles are another interesting option for sitting. Yes, they are. They have a nice long shaft. Uh, Lair of the Bearded Dragon makes some lovely Navajo spindles as well. Um, I've not used one, so I can't really talk about them, but he makes them out of bits of banksia seed. It's the big seed thing, and he cuts it down, and he 
beautiful. Anyway, um, I've played with, like I've touched one and I've looked at it, but I haven't used one. Um, but that's more for sitting on the ground and pushing it down your leg. You sort of like your legs here and you roll it across the edge of your leg. Um, and again, I find that personally it suits a thicker yarn, but with perseverance, anything is possible. Um, where are we in the chat? The chat has been moving. Um, where are we? Positive are better as you longer to reach the higher poles. Um, I'm, I don't get that. Okay, I'll have to search for a picture of a kick spindle to see what it looks like. Absolutely, check them out. Um, I recommend trying all different things. Um, so the other options that you have is how you hold your fluff. Okay, so when we're spindling, one of the issues that we have is our fibre that we're using. All right, so do you draft it? Do you not pre-draft it? It's up to the individual. Personally, when I'm choosing the fibres for my support spindles, I'm choosing short staples, soft, delicious, lofty. There we go. Base cam. Time for a sip of coffee. Mm. Um, I prefer to use the finer grades because it's going to take me a long time. I'm going to be touching this forever. Hang on a second. So this blue one is this, which is a 50-50 blend of cashmere and silk. Um, so that's a Turkish spindle with silk on it. So right there. So there's long... And I pulled it off and you couldn't see because it was outside of the camera. So long, lofty bits of silk. So silk is harder on a spindle because it's a long staple fibre. Still totally doable. Um, spindles prefer short, like little short, like bison and, and angora and, and all these like little short things, okay? Um, and saying that, I'm using merino, which is still a shortish staple in the scheme of staples. What have we got there? What's that about? Eight centimeters? No. About, yeah, about eight to ten centimeters. Oh, look, there's a ruler right here. Look at this. How convenient is that? It's like someone planned it. Um, the staples on this one are about ten centimeters. Okay? So that. Is probably usually about the, the longest I'd go on a support spindle, but the silk, I'm gonna make sure I've just got one staple of the silk. Yep. This silk is up around the sort of 16, 17 mark before it starts tapering off. So it's quite long for a spindle, but I wanted to do it, so I'm persevering with it. This one here is just some merino again. It's a bit longer, I think. So it's a slightly longer one. Yeah, it's about 11 to 12 centimetres. That's what This is what I'm using on this spindle right now, is this guy here. But I personally, with this, I break off a tuft and spin it. I don't pre-draft it, okay, um, when I'm using these spindles. But when I'm using a Turkish, I like to pre-draft it, okay. So pre-drafting is where you work out your staple length, okay. And when you pull, like I don't tend to do this with this right here, you kind of get a feel for it. When you start pulling, you've got, you pinch it. I'm trying to line that up there. When you start pulling and pinching, you're pulling it so it comes apart but doesn't totally come apart. So you pause it, pinch there, and pull the next bit. Pause it so you can see it's starting to thin out there. You pinch the next bit and you sort of stop before you get to that length. Okay, but then you've got this whole big long line of stuff to deal with instead of just your little tuft that you had, your little, what, 120 mil, like 20, 12 centimetres. Now you've got like a total metre and it's like you do, you just sort of get into a swing of it and you keep pulling and pulling and pre-drafting. And the reason you pre-draft is it makes the actual spinning easier later because all you're doing is adding the twist then. You might give it a bit more of a draft. You might sort of thicken and thin it off like I'll thin this off as I go. But then I've got to deal with this. I've got all this to deal with 
and spindle and stop the wind and you know it's craziness okay so you've got options there's options if you google distaff d-i-s-t-a-f-f -F, you've got a ton of options people crochet a little thing with a button and it's just like a little wrist cuff and they just tuck it in it just literally tucks in you can use a hair tie you can use a scrunchie as long as it's something that won't damage the fibers I was gifted this little guy he's a dis he's a wrist distaff and so that bit goes over my wrist and then it just swings and then I'm spindling and it keeps the fluff out of the way and then to load it this is just how I load it okay <laughs> I just want to clarify that this is how I just load it all right I try to keep it flat and I roll actually I don't load it on me and I roll it up okay and I want it to stay flat I don't want it to twist I don't mind going up and down but I don't want it to twist and then as I'm using it it just untwists nicely okay so now different people load their distaffs different ways with different fiber preparations you need to load it different ways but that's sitting there right I pop that on me and then as I'm spindling and I just keep spindling and I can't get a good angle there there we go I spindle and it slowly unwinds and pulls off and off you go now it does twist up on my wrist I don't know how to stop that from happening I tend to just pull the thing off my wrist every now and again and let it go but yes that's how I load a distaff so you've got options to keep things out of your way it looks like it would be dangerous on a hot day much fluffiness to stick to hands also sweatiness hot days sweatiness I don't like to have it touching my skin which is why I like to have one that dangles off um, where are we in the chat here I'm just catching up is this is this being interesting I sort of really wanted to make this more of a educational live stream today rather than just us blathering on so because I can't see any stats as far as I can see there's one person here and that would be me <laughs> so are you guys finding this interesting is it helpful or is it boring and should we never do this again I'd love to know so if you're watching the replay pop it in the comments down below if you have got any more questions throw them in the comments down below I obviously don't know everything but I can send you off to other places where they do know more um, Freaky Geek says please keep going I'm learning as I fool around um, okay sure um, very helpful that's great I'm glad you guys are enjoying it um, I always get a little bit worried trying something a bit different so yeah so this is not all there is to support spindling and spindling um, there are so many other options that you have this is just sort of like a little tasty get started bit um, I, I can't spin because the dogs hate it when I do B needs to be home to have them but I'm crocheting well that's awesome Holly's enjoyed it thank you Holly um, so but yeah you can I'm just gonna drink some more coffee here. you can spindle any fluff because how we started in in the spinning thing hundreds and hundreds of years ago was literally with a stick rolled down your hip and different places would roll it down the inner thigh out of thigh some places had you sitting some standing Mayans did the whole twisty twisty with the bit of wood the actual modern spinning wheel didn't come around till more recently um, so many so many different ways to do it you just need to find something and try it if these kinds of spindles aren't your jam try Turkish try drop spindle but just remember if you want finer weight yarns a lighter weight spindle is more helpful and if you want a heavier weight yarn the bigger heavier spindles are more helpful because you also have to remember the spindle has to hold the yarn okay um, Freaky says if you don't try something different you get stagnant absolutely um, as, so, as someone who is pretty much self-taught except for the little bits you showed me in Gimpy so this is awesome that is excellent um, Marion says good to listen whilst quilting for my first grandbaby oh congratulations it's gonna be so exciting um, <laughs> Spanish chick says I hate it because now I know there are baby spindles 
yes, little baby equal ones. We've got little baby Russians and little baby, there we go. Um, have you tried to make your own? All of this is new to me. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Marion says, wonderful. Oh, sorry, that's a message to Marion. Sorry, I'll leave that one. Um, Stacy says, I'm self-taught, so it's good to see how other people spin. Um, and Bubs had fun listening while getting some housework done. That is awesome, you guys. Um, so, yeah, so it has been um, – this is a rabbit hole, okay? If you're a knitter or a crocheter or a weaver or whatever and you normally buy all your yarn, um, this is definitely a whole other hobby, okay? Now, they are – they do intermingle because a finished product from this one can be used in this one. Um, but it is different things to remember, terms, worsted weight, uh, sorry, worsted in spinning is different to worsted in, in finished yarn, um, so as in the worsted weight yarn. So you've got words that are used by both crafts but mean different things. So there's, there's that as well, but it's a total rabbit hole. Um, Etsy is a good place to look double check the buyer reviews if they have no reviews i would run honestly um spindles are not the cheapest thing in the world to buy they're not dear and compared to a spinning wheel so cheap okay um but they're not the cheapest especially with the aussie dollar being bad postage taking forever um try and check it if you're on in australia layer of the bearded dragon is fantastic um it doesn't have a huge amount of spindles but every single thing that he makes is amazing, okay? Like, hands down, amazing, all right? Um, I've never had a single bad thing. Now, I've had some spindles that I bought for their quirky factor. Um, I have a tartar spindle, so it's actually a square on a shaft, and it doesn't spin the greatest. But... I did not buy that for spinning. I bought it because it's got glow-in-the-dark paint and it's a TARDIS, okay? That's why I bought that one. And I also bought Abby a little Minion. And again, maybe a little clunky, a little slow on the spin, but I didn't buy it for spinning. I bought it because it's cute, all right? Like that happens as well. Um, all of my crafts have turned into collections. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to do. It's easy to do. It's easy to do. Um, uh, where are we? Tony says, I've really enjoyed it, but unfortunately have to go. Thanks, Tony, for jumping in. I really appreciate you jumping in today. We can catch you another time. Um, where are we here? Tardis spindles. Yeah, I knew, oh, look, I meant to bring it out. Like the reality is I have this whole, I think it's meant to be like, it's like for barbecues and stuff. It's a big woven oblong basket. And um, it's full of spindles. So I kind of just selected a couple of different styles. I did not bring them all because, well, I'm not ashamed. It would feel like I'm skiting, okay? <laughs> it would feel like I'm skiting, like, look at all my spindles. I actually feel that this is probably a little over the top, you know, like, oh, look at these. Oh, and this one also, you know. Um, and <laughs> anyway, we, I'll stop bringing them over. Um the TARDIS is magic, holds way more than you know. <laughs> probably, probably. Um, I thought it was just me that my TARDIS didn't spin much. No, it's because of how it's weighted, okay? So spindles, because they have to spin like this, they're spinning in a centrifugal force, round things are better. The TARDIS is square, so it cuts off the airspeed that it gets around it, and it just doesn't spin as well. And that's okay because it's stunning, all right? Like, it's okay. And as long as you're still happy with it not spindling super fast, it'll spin better as it gets more weight on it. So if you persevere, it'll spin a bit better, but not heaps better. It's just because of the shape of it. Uh, but you can't get around it because TARDIS is a square. Um... But you knew Slindus was spin. Sorry, I'm confused. Um, like my laundry basket of spindles. Yes, like your laundry basket of spindles. That's right. It's in a, it's what is it? It's an embarrassment of riches. It's an embarrassment of riches. 
Um, the other thing that it does is it shows me how many projects I've started that I haven't finished, like not finished, not finished, not finished, not finished, not finished. Um, all the others not finished. Uh, <laughs> and then like, cause I only started this one last week. I've got some photos of me sitting out the back, you know, lounging in the sun um, with my basket of purple fluff. This is this one's project basket. There we go. Oh, it's all falling out. Get back in there. So the basket of purple fluff, that goes on there. I shall put this here because that's ready spinning later when I get a chance. This afternoon we'll be involving such things as packaging up mystery lace boxes and doing lots of postage. So I don't think I'm going to get much time for spinning. So I'm going to have to pack all this up and not look at it because I want to sit and spin all the time. Okay, because it is my relaxation thing. Um, Rebecca says, I don't have Turkish or fang spindles. I, I le definitely like Turkish and I've got a couple of fangs and I like how they look, but I think I personally prefer to spin on the, on the Russians and the fangs. Does that, does that make sense? But that's me and we all like different things. Um, Stacy says, I have a hexi drop spindle that's beautiful, but it doesn't spin that well. Yeah, and I think you'll, it'll come down to the shape and it cutting off the wind as it's spindling. Um, yeah, the um, game says, only one spinning project at the moment, the silk nemesis on the Victorian silk spindle. You need to get that finished, girl. Get it out of your life. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. It is definitely, yeah. All right, my friends, um, I'm going to do the end of stream rundown, which is if you want to support Fiberific on Patreon, please do. Um, it, the, the links will come up in the chat, hopefully. My fingers across the mods are on it. Um, what that does is helps to supply me with lighting, microphones that work, the webcam, the other camera, my internet connection, all the cords, all the cords, there's so many cords. Um, and it helps me to continue doing live streams um, because they do take time out of my business and out of my day. And also it supplies me with coffee. And at the moment that is instant, which is not my favorite. Um, we also have uh, the Mystery Lace Club. So if you want to receive a parcel each month that has a project in it, it has the pattern, it has the yarn, it is knitting um, and it's always lace knitting but it's not always lace weight if that makes sense so we've had projects go out that it was one of the um, the Hokey Locutelli shawls it was in the DK and other things like that um, oh absolutely we also now have merch Game Widows reminds us we have gorgeous merch we have coffee cups and tote bags and I've got a little zipper thing somewhere. I, believe it or not, I splashed coffee on my tote bag on the way in. Little zipper bag. Did I? Yeah, there we go. Ugh, little zipper pouch, which is so cute. I've got my chibis in there and my stitch markers. Um, um, so that's the little tiny one. There's lots of options. Um, and then if you just want knitting needles or hand dyed yarn by me, you can just hit my website like fiberific.com.au. So there's lots of ways to support Fiberific so I can keep having fun chatting and birthing this information to you. Hopefully it was helpful. Um, and I'll catch you all next week unless you're going to be in tonight's Zoom chat. So I will see you later. Bye.